Welcome to the Canoga Park Youth Arts Center's new series, Inspired by Spring. You know, spring is the time when a lot of animals are born and they can choose unusual places to be born. So today, we're gonna to take a look at logs. A log is a tree that's fallen down and is now flat. You know that expression, if a tree falls in the woods, does anyone hear it? Well, all the animals in the forest hear it because when a log falls, it's a great opportunity. I'm gonna show you a picture of what we're gonna be doing today. So here's our friend, a raccoon, who has made his den, which is another word for a home, inside a log. Now, he's not alone in there. The log also provides a home for insects and to lay their eggs, and then other animals can come and get those insects that are inside the log. Let's take a look at some of all of those other animals that use logs. Here, it's hard to tell because he's having a fun time on his back, that's a leopard. And look, he found a hollow log to hang out in. And if we go down here, we can see our friend Mr. Mouse. He's in a log that's still upright. Because even when a log is, when a tree is upright, it still provides shade and it provides oxygen and homes and fruit. So this tree he found is still up. But when we go down to our little wolfy pups, aren't they adorable? This is their den. So they waited until the log rotted out to make their home in it. Now here's another tree that's still upright. And look, we have our woodpecker and he makes this nest in there and those guys are waiting for their dinner. Maybe you've heard what, uh, woodpeckers outside of your house. I know I have some. Now we have Mr. Squirrely Bob. Mr. Squirrely Bob's enjoying his food and I'm not sure if that log is on the ground or not, but he does look happy. And when we get to our last one, that's what we're gonna be doing today. Mr. Raccoon with their little bandit, bandit face. And he's living in a log that's still going up as a tree. Let's take a look at some of the details of the drawing that I did for you guys. Now, you may know that a lot of the stuff I do for you, it's just lines, but I wanted to show you your pencil can give you much more, all the shades of gray, but you kind of got to think about it, right? So the darkest spot that I wanted was inside the log. So I drew my log, and here's the opening that the raccoon is in. So I had to plan my grays. So this was a lighter gray, then the log, and I just left this grass to be kind of an abstract shape. I remember texture, you can get a lot of texture with your pencil, use it on the side. Now, different pencils get different dark, darknesses. So this is just a regular pencil, but an art pencil would get a lot blacker of a line. Here's my horizon line, and I just put a few trees in there too. Now, I'm gonna show you guys how to draw a raccoon face. I should know because they're in my yard all the time. So, the basic shape is a triangle up here. You see a triangle, an upside down triangle? A lot of animals have that as their basic face. I put a couple of ears. Raccoon's ears are kind of big. And the second thing I did is I put in, these are white. A lot of people don't know that a raccoon has a lot of white on his face too. So we give him these two little marks that are coming down here. They go down up his nose. Now we add his bandit. So it's white above his bandit little mask, and this part here is going to be black. And as we come down to the last picture, you can see the bottom portion of our raccoon's face is a very light color. I put his eyes in, and this is a little bit darker. So you see I've got different shades. I've got light gray, dark gray, and white. And I need all of those grays to really communicate what a raccoon's face kind of looks like. All right, my friends, it's raccoon in a log time. Are we ready? Okay, I'm gonna start with my log because that's like the biggest thing that we see. A line to the top of the log, a line to the bottom of the log, and then I'm gonna have my open. It's a circle, but it's a kind of a mixed up circle because the log is rough, right? So here's my log, and then the back of my log kind of goes like that. Do you see how this looks like a log now? That's the inside of my log. This is the outside of my log. Now I'm going to put in my tree background, and that's just a squiggly line. These are just the bushes. Remember, they're not just all the same. Some are tall, some are low. Then I'm going to throw some trees in here. Remember, trees are fatter at the bottom and they get skinnier as they get up. Maybe I'll remember, trees are different too, so you want them different thicknesses. 
I'm going to put another one here, but it's going to start right down there. There we go. I'm going to make that one split. So now we have the ground. That's the ground. It comes over here. Da, 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 da. And it winds up over there. So now we have our bushes, our trees. Let's throw another tree in here. Ta da! Okay. Now we're going to have our grass. That's just going to be, again, make them kind of different. Not just one big same thing. They're all kind of unique. Well, you know what that leaves us? That leads us to our raccoon. Remember what I said triangle face. Here's my upside down triangle. All right. Big ears. Big ears. Okay. Now, remember there was a line that kind of came down here and went off. Kind of comes over here and goes back off. This is his little bandit. There's his little eyeballs. This comes down for his nose. Now remember we've talked about this. The nose on most, most animals is an upside down triangle. So there's our little dude's face, but he needs the rest of his body. Very simple. One line here shows me his back. That's all it was, was one line. I don't know if you can see this tree. Let's make him a little darker. Now we got to put in some paws. So I got one paw coming out here. Raccoons have an opposing thumb, much like ours. That's why they can get into so much trouble. Now I have another hand coming out here. And the rest of his body is going to go back there. Now when I want to have to, I can put some texture. See how I'm making it look like a bark in here? I'm not going to color this guy in because that would take a really long time. We don't have that much time. But I'm just going to kind of give you an idea by making some of these lines a little darker where we're headed with this. All right, here's my raccoon ear, his little face. Here's his other ear. Oh, and by the way, raccoons have a little white that goes around the tips of their ears. Here's his back. And just, I'm just going to do one little thing here so you guys can see. When you darken that log, the inside of the log, look what happens. A raccoon, who thinks he's hiding from us, now starts to stand out a little bit more. And we start to understand the drawing a little bit more. Because it's just like a circle, right? This whole thing. But if we start to make it darker, then your brain starts to say, oh, wait, I think that's the inside of a log. I'm going to hit this part up here, make it a little bit darker. There we go. All right. Oh, under his belly. Don't forget that. So here we go. We got our log. You can color that in darker. We have our trees. Let's put a couple more bushes in here. Again, they cannot look alike. And if you overlap them, you are creating three-dimensional space. Just to drive the raccoon point home, how about we just do his eyes? So it really looks like a raccoon. All right, you little bandit. There we go. There is our raccoon. I have an extra special upgrade for you guys today. I know that it's always on a flat piece of paper, but I want you to know that you don't always have to stay with a flat piece of paper. <laughs> Look what I did. I made a log. I made a log with a raccoon hanging out in it. Now this is just a piece of construction paper. And on one side, I painted, I used oil pastel to give the texture of the log. Now, there's like four colors in there. So when you're coloring your log in, it's not just brown. It's brown and orange and purple and black. There's all kinds of colors in it. Always overlap your oil pastels. So I, I colored the front of it, and then I flipped my paper over, and I colored the back. Because you see, we have to see inside as well. So when we're looking inside, we don't want to see white paper because we're inside of a log. And then I stapled it together. Binka, 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 binka. Cut out my hole it's with a regular pair of scissors. And then on a separate sheet of paper, I made my little raccoon. I folded up a little sheet of paper to staple him to so he could stick out a little bit. There's a little piece of paper in there that you can see he's kind of attached to. That way he can almost shake his head. Yup, that's me. Here I am inside a log. So I hope this is a fun idea. I hope you guys try it. And I also hope you enjoyed our walk through the woods, learning about where all these animals live. And maybe you'll have more respect for that log next time you stumble upon it. Thanks again for joining us for Inspired by Spring. We'll see you again for another lesson. Thank you.